Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and today I'm going to teach you how to hand paint some paper using a low relief texture scraping effect utilizing stencils. I've got plenty of stencils to choose from. So this was a fun experimentation and the results came out fantastic. So if you've got a few minutes, let's check out this super cool technique and I'm using deli paper and dictionary pages. Welcome to the studio. So today I'm working with a low relief texture technique that only works with very thin papers. So in order to get the low relief texture, and I'm using stencils for the low relief texture, you need to use a thin paper with a smooth surface because I'm going to use the card to scrape the paint across the surface. So we need to have a smooth surface and non-absorbent. So you can't use rice paper for this technique because by the time you drag the paint down a couple of inches on rice paper, like in our favorite rice paper pad, when you pull the paint across the surface of the rice paper, it's so absorbent, it's going to suck up the paint before you get very far. So what I'm using are thin papers for low relief that have a smooth surface that the card scraper and the paint can glide across. The first paper that I'm using is dictionary pages. They're great fun because all the text and type is going to show through the effect, but they're also very, very thin paper and they have a relatively smooth surface. The second paper that I'm going to use is deli paper. This paper is unique because it's translucent like tissue. You can see right through it, but it's got a nice smooth surface and it's very thin. So we will get our relief scraping through that as well. So those are the two papers that I'm using. I'm using the deli paper without texture type, but it has a nice translucency. So if you do the deli paper with light colors, you can actually lay them over each other and they will visually blend when you glue them down. Because here's an example of how you can see right through it. So the second thing that I'm using, the product that I'm using, are two of my stencils. One is a bunch of spirals, and this is called Klimt Memory. And then this one is from the Peacock Collection, and I'm not sure of the title. It's, it's, it's escaping me right now. But it is. these are both from my designs from Joggles.com. And <clears throat> this is the last week of the big stencil sale at Joggles. So I thought I would do another stencil lesson in a different way than the gel plate because this is the last week of the 25% off all stencils at Joggles. It started on April 1st. It's going to end the end of April and it is um, an excellent sale because that's a pretty good discount. So, okay, so let's get started. I'm also going to use a sheet of palette paper to tr try to keep my surface of my desk sort of clean, although it's not all that clean ever. Um, and the first paper will be the dictionary page. So what you're going to need is, as I mentioned, a credit card, gift card, or room key, and two colors of contrasting paint. So the first one I'm going to do is, um, the deli, the, um, dictionary pages. And with that, I'm going to use two pretty translucent golden fluid acrylics. Now we can see from the black tick marks on the front of the container underneath this actual swipe of paint, this is not printed, this is hand painted on the golden label, that the transparent yellow oxide is highly transparent. I'm gonna use that as my bottom layer so you can see those tick marks through it. That's gonna allow all the text and type of my dictionary pages to show up nicely. And then the contrasting color I'm gonna go over the top with is burnt sienna and that is, um, partially transparent um, because you can still see the tick marks through it, but it's a little heavier. So this will be the bottom layer and this will be the top layer. The second uh, page that I'm going to do is going to be the deli paper where I'm not worried about preserving the type and allowing that to show through. And for that reason, I'm going to use teal on the bottom, my lighter color. And then on top for my contrasting color, I'm going to use ultramarine blue. Now, ultramarine blue is one of those that are semi 
uh, translucent. You can see the black tick marks under there, sort of, but definitely you cannot see any black tick marks with teal. That is an opaque color. So we would not want to use teal as the bottom color on our book pages because of its opaqueness. It would cover up all that text. And so it wouldn't make any sense for us to use that on the book page, on the dictionary page. So this is the color combo I'm going to use on the deli paper. So you want to keep in mind the opacity of your color and your color combinations for this technique. The light color goes on the bottom and the darker contrasting color goes on the top. All right, so our very highly translucent, transparent yellow iron oxide, I'm going to spread that out kind of liberally on my palette paper sheet. I'm going to put my, let's go with this one, the peacock doodle. And we're going to put the paper, the um, dictionary page right on top of the stencil and the stencil on top of the palette paper just to keep the surface clean and to give yourself a place to put the paint. We're going to take the room key. We're going to load it up. We're going to hold the top of the paper and we're just going to scrape down and you can see how nicely this is just sliding over the surface. The surface of the paper is not absorbing the paint like other types of paper would. And we're going to get really nice relief on this paper because the paper is very thin. So I'm going to try and get as much coverage as I can so I can use this full sheet of paper. You're seeing a little bit of the relief show up here. Now the bottom layer, you can scrape till your heart's content over and over to cover the whole layer. But when we come in with the top layer, you don't want to duplicate you don't want to double up your scraping. You just want to scrape once to reveal the beautiful texture. If you come twice or two or three times, you're going to make it less um, contrasty and, and less successful. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to put out the burnt sienna and remember only to scrape once and not to keep scraping. So we want to make sure we got plenty of the burnt sienna on the card, grabbing from the top and scraping. And look at how that beautiful stencil texture just comes right through. Isn't that lovely? Now, resist the temptation. We're not going to go over it again. I can pull some out the sides here if I want to make sure I have a full, full sheet. I can grab some just at the bottom here, but I don't want to go over anything I've already done. Look at how beautiful that is. A low relief texture scraping of that stencil. Just beautiful. And you can still read the dictionary text through the two colors. So you can see in here that the way that I add the card angled, I applied less paint and so the contrast is less and you can see through it better. Over here, I angled the card a little bit of a different angle and I applied a heavier layer of paint. And over here, that burnt sienna is really building up and becoming partially opaque. So the angle that you have the card at when you scrape will determine how much paint is dispersed and how thick that top layer is versus how thin. So again, right in here, you can see it's thinner and over here you can see it's thicker. And that has to do with how you angle the card when you're scraping. So you can experiment with changing the angle to disperse more or less paint and also loading your card up with more or less paint and changing the angle will give you a different layer on the top. So that's our first print. Now let's try that also with our second stencil. We can do both with both stencils. So this is Klimt Memory. I love it for the spirals. I'm going to grab another dictionary page here, nice and thin. Put that over. I've still got some paint out here, so I'm going to see if I can grab that without the darker brown. So the transparent yellow oxide. And again, you can double scrape the bottom layer. You just don't want to double scrape the top layer. So you can see those spirals sort of starting to show up in this color, but it's the contrasting top color that really makes for the unique effect. So I probably should put out a little bit more. You want to make sure you have a decent amount of it loaded on the card because you're only able to scrape once. So you need to have the, a good amount of paint and scraping. Oh, wow, look at that. So I'll grab it down here and go lower and then 
here. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Resist the temptation to overscrape it. Don't do it, Elizabeth. Don't do it. So we've got a little bit of a gap in there, but if I bring that card down here and scrape over these two, it's going to mess this up. So let's stay with it like that. And let's also, again, thinner application here, thicker application over there, depending uh, on the angle of the card and the amount of paint being dispersed. But you get this beautiful low relief pattern of the stencil underneath and you get the text and type of the book pages showing through because of the highly translucent bottom layer. And if you angle that card and scrape it so that it is really a, a pale, subtle pattern, you're gonna see way more of the type. But you still see the type through all of the light color on the bottom layer. So some other colors by Golden um, that are uh, highly translucent for your bottom layer, include green gold, that's very translucent. Uh, manganese blue, that's a highly translucent. Um, try to think of another one. Uh, Indian yellow, that's another one that's highly translucent. And again, that's why the tick marks are on the front of the container, so that you can see exactly how translucent the colors are. So go with your most translucent colors on the bottom layer, and make sure that you're not using opaque colors if you have text or type or sheet music that you want to show through. Now, I don't know if you're going to ever be able to get sheet music on such thin paper, but you know what I'm saying. If you have text or type or marks that you want to show through, you're definitely not going to use an opaque color of paint. Okay. Now, another word about golden, I just have to say, it's so helpful that they put these swatches of paint on the front of the container to show you the translucency. They don't put them there for you to be able to see the color. The color is clear, uh, clearly apparent through the container. These are here to show you the translucency and they are hiring handicapped adults and um, older adults to do these hand-painted swatches. So how wonderful is that for the community that this employee-owned company is employing people to not only put the swatches on the containers, but they're also hand-painting their color charts. So Golden's color charts are also hand-painted by the same employees. All right, so the next color combo and on the deli paper, we're going to switch it up. So let's... Uh, Get the paint off of this, set that aside. I'm super excited to let you know that I have some new stickers and magnets in my website shop. They are vinyl die cut stickers and a die cut magnet that you can use to add paper paintings punch of color into your life. Stick them on your laptop case, your iPad, your fridge, your planner, your whiteboard. I've got them stuck all over my studio and they just make me happy, make me smile. And when you order them, I'm going to ship them out to you the same day. Thanks for the support and check out my website shop. I've got resources down below the video for you for both of these papers, the deli and the dictionary pages that you can buy online. Um, again, the stencils are from joggles.com. They are on a big sale right now. And we all get plenty of these one way or another. Okay, so laying that beautiful, super thin with a nice slick, not slick, but smooth surface for scraping across that deli paper. And you know when I say deli paper, that this is the paper that the deli wrap, wraps your sandwich in. Um, so you can get it at restaurant supply, but they often want to give you a quantity that would take you your whole life to use up. So you can buy it um, with my resource below in smaller packages. So our base layer is going to be teal. So I'm going to put that out. going to take the, make sure I've got plenty of it because this is a bigger sheet. So scraping. If I'm going to use the whole sheet, I want to make sure I, I get color all over it so the whole sheet of paper is useful. So I'm scraping all the way down to the bottom and up towards the top here. Okay, that's good coverage. You'll also notice that when I scrape 
the paint with this card. It's not perfectly dry, but it's applied so thin, you don't need to wait to scrape the second layer. At least I never have. I don't know if you waited for this to dry completely, if you would get a different result. Um, it's possible. And if you do that, I would love for you to share below in the comments if you found it to be a different result. Um, I'd be curious, so let me know. All right, so yeah, let me know if you if you have a different um, results with letting the bottom layer dry. Okay, so we're gonna come back with the second color is ultramarine blue. I'm gonna make sure I get a little bit more of that out. Don't be stingy. I'm gonna cover the whole page. Okay, so grabbing that wide on the card and scraping. Look at that. Beautiful pattern from the peacock stencil coming through. Now here, I've, I've missed, and I'm going to come back in, and you can see that some, how that kind of messes up the, the look. But you see, it worked really well in here, but if I double scrape, you can see what happens there. We lose sort of the, the relief pattern. Um, so it's always good to make a mistake so that you can see what happens when you do what I tell you not to. So I'm gonna drag in here, and I'm gonna drag some more down here. And there we go. Let's see if I can get it in the middle here. There we go. And a little bit in here, but don't overdo it. Okay. We got a little paint left, um, but again, a beautiful sheet of paper. This is the peacock low relief look at that and this is just because the combination of this very very thin paper with that surface that allows us to scrape the paint across it isn't that gorgeous and this is going to make for great collage paper all right i love that if you'd like to learn more about my stencil hanging and organization system that allows the stencils to be seen but not to get tangled, check out that video in the upper right hand corner on the stencil hanging system that I devised for my garage studio space. It's brilliant! So let's try this again with the second stencil, the Klimt Memory with the spirals. Everybody loves spirals and another sheet of deli paper. That'll give me an opportunity to use some of this blue that I squirted out. All right, let's wipe that off and start with the teal again. Who doesn't love teal? This is generally everybody's favorite color. Okay, so loading up the card like that and scraping. Getting good coverage here. Remember, it's okay to over scrape the bottom layer, but not the top layer. The top layer, you just want to scrape once for the best relief texture. Okay, so putting out some more ultramarine. Wipe off the teal, scoop up the ultramarine. Again, you want it loaded on the card like that. And we're going to scrape. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look at that beautiful pattern. I just love this color combination. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So now we've got the Klimt Memory Spirals in the same beautiful blue color combination. And what a beautiful pattern you can see that it's darker here because of the angle of the card and the amount of the paint and then you can get into areas here where it's a little lighter because of the angle of the card and the amount of paint so you'll have to play with how much paint and the angle of your card and you'll also have to let me know if you let that bottom layer dry completely if you get better different or the same results as i've gotten here with um doing it basically as while well, it's still relatively wet so excellent results with those. 
And I wanted to share with you while I was preparing for this video, I did do a combo. This is green gold on the bottom, the one that I said was highly translucent. And this is um, Jenkins green on the top. So you can see that you can still read the dictionary type through even the dark color. Um, and this was a different Klimt stencil. And then this one was the same peacock tail stencil, but this one didn't work as well because there's not enough contrast. It's pyrrole orange on the bottom and quinacridone magenta on the top. And those two colors were not contrasting enough. So you don't really see the pattern as well. So you need to have a high contrast on your colors, such as the high contrast of light to dark here, the high contrast of light to dark there, and the blue. So this is an example. The pattern is in there. I think you can still see it. The pattern is in there, but it's the color choice that made it less successful because the quinacridone magenta is not that much darker than the pyrrole orange, so we don't see the contrast. So be sure to pick your colors in high contrast to show up. So transparent yellow iron oxide and burnt sienna, teal and ultramarine blue. The light color always goes on the bottom. And this other successful one was green gold with Jenkins green on the top. Okay, so light on the bottom, dark on the top, thin paper, so you get that low relief texture. And let me know in the comments what kind of results you get. So thank you for being here with me this week and playing with stencils and low relief texture scraping. I'd love to hear your comments about this technique and let me know if you've got some great color combinations to share, especially translucent ones that allow us to see the text and type on the dictionary pages. Please like or subscribe to my channel. That helps the videos do better. And also know that to my patrons, I thank you from the bottom of my art heart. It is Patreon that helps support the free YouTube videos and Patreon has in-depth multi-part tutorial videos like a workshop online available to you on your own time frame and your own pace with patreon.com slash Elizabeth St. Hilaire. Thanks again for being here and I'll see you next week.